to another big after hours mover. Shares of L Brands tanking on earnings, bucking the broader retail uh, rally this week. Bob Pisani is at the NYSE to break it down. Bob. Hello, Melissa. You know, the retailers aren't dead yet, but department stores and specialty apparel are still having a really tough time. After the close, Victoria's Secret maker L Brands reported fourth quarter earnings. They were above expectations, but they gave 2019 guidance that was well below expectations. That stock trading down about 6% in the after hours. Still, a spate of better than expected earnings results has generally lifted retailers this week. The XRT, or the retail ETF, is up 2% this week to its highest level since early December, up 20% since the December 24th low. That's about matching the S&P 500's gain since then. Companies with recent earnings results like Etsy, Dillard's, Best Buy, Macy's, they lead the price gainers this week. Now, many of these retailers are also busy returning money to shareholders. Recently, Home Depot, Best Buy, and TJX increased their dividend payout. And Best Buy and Home Depot announced very large buybacks. Best Buy is one of those corporations I call buyback monsters. These are companies that have lowered their shares outstanding more than 25% since 2010. In Best Buy's case, they've gone from 418 million to 269 million shares from 2010 to today. That's a share count reduction of 36%. And today's $3 billion buyback announcement would reduce that by another 15% if it was fully executed. What this means is that all other things being equal, Best Buy's earnings are 36% higher than in 2010 with no change in the fundamentals, just fewer shares. But the recent gains doesn't really mean retail is back in a big way that we've seen. So there's very clear winners here and very clear losers in this ongoing battle with Amazon. So far, it appears that discounters like Walmart, TJX, Raw Stores, Target, and the dollar stores will be survivors, as will the home improvement companies like Home Depot and Lowe's. And Costco and Best Buy also appear to be survivors. But department stores and specialty apparel stores like L Brands, they're still under tremendous pressure, and they are still ceding share to online players and off-price stores. Back to you, Melissa. All right. Thank you, Bob. So let's trade some of these names, and uh, I'll go to the option monster. Mm. Ooh. Pete. About the <laughs> buyback <Pedro>. monsters. <laughs> because it's I know you like Best Buy. Yeah, and I talk about that whenever I'm doing a power pitch. Right? Love Fast the power pitch, pitch. Power pitch, all those cases. One of the things that I always like to look at is, is this something that they've been doing for a long time, Miller, or is it something they're just trying to do for financial engineering? And that's why I always like to look back the last decade or so and see if people are doing it. I think the interesting thing about retail right now, those that are having success, they have success because they're doing it online, whether, it, whether it's Best Buy or Target or Walmart. I mean, go across the board. And they have great cash flow. I started the show tonight with cash flow being a really big deal. Look at the cash flows versus the market cap of a Target or a Walmart or some of these names. It's unbelievable. Best Buy, you can see all of the, the, the stock that they're buying back, most of that is coming just from the cash flows that they've got. So that and raising dividends, there's a lot of different areas of retail right now, but you've got to execute. And Lowe's is on their way. I think Lowe's was one of those that I actually kind of gave up on. It was just Home Depot and then Lowe's sort of in the background. I think Lowe's with this new CEO, uh, Ellison, is doing an outstanding job of positioning themselves better and better against Home Depot. Yeah, to me, look, Pete's talking about the hard lines. Best Buy, Home Depot, Lowe's, all these, to me, so far superior to anything else in big box or in, in broad lines, staples, you name it. Food, re food retailers are a mess. To me, again, the margins are really poor, to put it lightly. So, uh, again, I think that's where you want to stay in these names. That you know, is a big move in Best Buy. Stock's not expensive. So what happened oh, with sorry. Lowe's and Home Depot? I mean, what, does, what do Lowe's results tell you about Home Depot? They're catching up. If you look at the, the change, you know, year over year change, they're clearly catching up to Home Depot, and I think that's why the stock is performing like it did. If you looked at the initial reaction of Lowe's, it was actually lower, and then it actually reversed. So I think the market is saying it's catching up. But quickly about L Brands, people will look and say, wait a second, you know, at 10 times forward earnings, it's cheap. Gross margins continue to decline. This guide for full year is a disaster, and they guided to 220 to 270. It's probably going to come in at the lower end of guidance. You have negative EPS growth, so throw the whole valuation thing out the window. That coupled with the fact that it's so bad, we don't even pay the gratuitous Victoria's Secret footage anymore. Oh, be careful. That's uh, how bad. Uh, no, uh, we're not playing no. it. No, uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because people wow. don't buy it, that, apparently. That's right. That's what happen. I'm talking about. Although so don't Pete, buy the stock. Either. Pete likes what would the, bed, if we the did. bath and body works part Absolutely of the business. Absolutely, I do. Yeah. That's a little strength coming from that part of the business. The what? 
Like you don't even know it's part of the business, do you? What, the mango wash? Yeah. I love a good mango wash. Big mango wash. You could use one.